Well, hello, welcome to another episode of Ask... No, today's behind the picture, right? Exactly. Today's behind the picture. Welcome. Glad you guys are here. Thanks for joining me on a Sunday. Today we were talking about your perfect photography niche, not just a photography niche. What should, what niche should you be? What niche should you be shooting? But your actual perfect photo niche. Today's all about how to match with potential clients that need the work that you do. And more importantly, how to make the type of work that potential clients actually need. But first, first you need to hear a few things. You need to hear a couple for help. Oh, you need to hear lots of things. <laughs> you need to hear lots of things. But first, you need to understand this. By the way, if you're tuned in live, hello, welcome. I'm Cardi. I'm a professional photographer. I've been doing this for 33 years. 33 years. This is my 34th year. And in a couple of months, I'll be saying I've been doing this for 34 years professional. Also, February is a special month. Not only is it Black History Month, February is also the month that I started this podcast. And February 15th, which is very soon, in a week or so, it's going to be my third year doing Behind the Picture. Year three. My first year in a bit, I was doing it on Twitch. So this is year three. So this is anniversary month. It's Black History Month. It's a celebration, baby. So know this. The most important brand is you. Forget about all the brands that you'll ever work for in your photography career. I want you to wrap your head around. By the way, if you don't have a notebook and a pen right now, then the information that you're hearing, although it's releasing dopamine, it's going in and then it's leaving. So you have to make notes. If you're not making notes on the things that are important, you're not really retaining the information. So my suggestion is making notes. The most important brand is you. I want you to wrap your head around that concept. If you're not an information sponge, you will not be open to the possibilities that are existing all around you. This is all relevant to you finding your perfect niche. If you're not an information sponge, you'll think your ideas are the best. Your concepts are the best. Without going out to do the research to see what's happening, you're an island. You're an island with an ego, which is the worst kind of photographer to be. An uninformed island. There's no one more unique than you. There is no one more unique than you. You have a unique skill set. You have unique interests. So you don't need to be anyone else to find your perfect niche. You just need to be the ideal version of yourself. Your ideal photographer self, your ideal human self. You have to zoom out. Sometimes we look at things too closely. We're right here, right in it. We got to back up a little bit. So got to zoom out and think about your ideal future. What's your ideal future as a photographer? How is your story going to end? Your story is what separates your personal brand and what determines your niche. It's your story that determines your personal brand. So you have to map your ideal future. If you don't have a vision for your ideal future, how do you ever expect to reach it? So what we have to do is a process. This is how you find your perfect niche. We have to do a process called intelligent imitation. I'm going to write down the first one too, because it's kind of relevant. Number one, map 
your ideal future. That's the first thing that we do is we map our ideal future. And that's what I want you to do. What's your perfect photography life look like? And number two, I want you to think about intelligent imitation. And I'm going to get into exactly what that is. Intelligent. Oops, my, I don't type very, or write very well with the tablet here. Intelligent imitation. Now what's intelligent imitation? What I want you to be thinking about is when you take something from one source, meaning you're just looking at my photography and you're trying to do all the stuff that I do. When you take something from one source, it's called plagiarism. You're stealing. But when you take things, when you take ideas, when you take styles, when you take visions from many different sources, it's called research. You might appreciate my tone, my attitude, the way that I present my information here on my podcast, but you understand I've spent decades, decades learning, listening, and communicating with people that are smarter than me. So I'm able to relay that to you. I've been taking the best bits of information that I've learned throughout my entire career. And I've been taking those best bits and making it part of how I do things, how I deliver information. It's called intelligent imitation. This is how we formulate our identity. This is what all of us do. This is how we formulate our identity is through intelligent imitation. This is how also we can create our brand as a photographer. This is how you can also create your ideal photography business. You can take the best aspects of other photographers approach, their marketing, their outward reach, their social media presence, and you can filter them into what works for you. Every successful business works that way. Every successful business. Do you think Apple invented the personal computer? No, they did not. They, well, I mean, Xerox really invented it. Xerox invented the mouse, but Apple took that invention and made it better. They took the personal computer, they made it better. Every successful business works that way. Why invent a niche for your photography? Why invent a niche when there's already niches that exist and marketplaces to support that niche? Why would you invent a niche? Some of the niches that I hear, oh my God, I wanna shoot um, crocheting specifically for elderly people who are over 40. It's like, crocheting only that's your niche why invent a niche when there's already niches that exist that have a marketplace attached to them in order to really reach your photographic potential you got to dive into learning you need to learn the skill of persuasive writing how often do you hear me talk about stutter newsletter, stutter newsletter, write about your photography, write about your photography. You're learning how to persuade people. And you do that with every email, with every tweet, with every social media post, you have the ability to be persuading people, but photographers don't spend any time on writing their writing skills. You need to learn the skill of consistency. Oh my God, consistency. If we're not consistent, and again, so many people aren't consistent, because so many people aren't consistent, all you need to do is be consistent and you're ahead of so many people. You're ahead of so many people if you can just be consistent and if you can embrace 
writing instead of thinking I'm a photographer. I make photos. That's what I do. Finding your niche is useless. If you don't zoom out and learn how important the skill is of persuasive writing. So here's some mind breaking things. We all know that time is non renewable. Time runs out. So people are worrying or are, are wondering when's the perfect time to start their photography business. By the way, you have no idea when your clock is over. Your clock could be over tomorrow, but you don't know it. And then you go get hit by a car or whatever. Like time runs out. It's a non renewable resource. So stop wasting time. Here's another thing. I'm going to break your brain. What is 1% of 50 years? 1% of 50 years is six months. So essentially every six months you are eating 1% of your 50 year long career every six months, you're losing one percentage. And yet people still don't start their photography career. 1% of 50 years is six months. Stop wasting time. So you're here because you want to know how to find your perfect photography niche. Okay. Get your notebook because I'm going to flash through it. I have a masterclass today at four. I got to get through this episode and I got a lot of stuff to talk about with you guys today. And then I'm going to get into even, I have goosebumps about today's masterclass because I've been working on it for like a week. Let's talk first about why. Why finding your niche is important. Why do I have to have a niche? Why can't I just be, why can't I just be a generalist? Why niche with photography? Why? I'm gonna get into it. First of all, having a niche in your photography business is so important. Number one, it establishes your expertise. It establishes your expertise. By specializing in a particular niche, you establish yourself as an expert in that area. Clients seek you out because they know that you have the skills necessary to produce high quality work in that specific area. Food and drink, product photography, headshots, high fashion, um, car photography, Cosmetics. <laughs> I'm going to show you front page of Behance, what front page status looks like on Behance and how everyone who is here on the front page, these are all award winning images. These are all award winning niched images. So if we look at this, which is a car photograph and subsequently Audi Quattro, it's a full campaign for Audi. If you look now at this editorial, look at this photography. Okay. So I'm going to ask you, what kind of photography do you think that this guy does? Kind of looks like he's a car photographer, right? So let's look at his other projects and you see indeed that's all he shoots. He only shoots cars and because he only shoots cars, he's able to shoot cars because he's done so many reps. He's able to do it at such a level way better than you could if you tried to do car photography tomorrow because 
He's not a generalist. He doesn't shoot all kinds of different things. He shoots one thing. And because he shoots one thing over and over and over and over and over again, he's better at it than you are. And he's a specialist. And because of that, he has clients that need his type of car photography, which clearly there's lots of them. Number two, it helps you stand out from the competition. When you focus on a specific niche, you differentiate yourself from other photographers who offer more of a general range of services. Bob who shoots, I do uh, weddings, babies, parties, engagements, I'll shoot your car if you have one. Oh, I do product photography. I do headshots. I shoot fashion. I shoot everything. Landscapes. Wow. Your, absolute, your work is absolutely forgettable because how can you be amazing at all of those different things? How much time in a day do you have to be able to get good at all of the... Well, it's just, you know, it's just my natural talent. It's like, wow. Okay. How do you market yourself? How do you market yourself when you do everything? When you specialize, you attract clients who are looking specifically for that type of photography. And guess what? It makes marketing way easier. When you have a clear niche, you can tailor your marketing efforts to reach that specific audience specifically. It helps you save time and money. You're not just doing a general call out like, hey, does anyone need photography? And you're like, no, I shoot food and beverage. I'm going to restaurants, to chefs, like to small business owners that are in the food and beverage business. And this is my offering. This is the value that I could bring to you. Like, look at the result that you'll get if you use my services. And these people use those type of services. So that's a marriage made in heaven. It makes marketing easier, helps you save time and money, and you're avoiding, you're avoiding marketing to people who don't need your particular niche, which increases your profitability. By specializing in a particular niche, you often are able to charge higher prices. I won't say often, I'll say always. You're able to hire, charge higher prices because specialized clients are willing to pay more for specialized expertise. Example, you have a Lamborghini. Are you paying Bob the generalist photographer to shoot your quarter of a million dollar car? Or are you hiring this guy who has clear experience shooting quarter of a million dollar cars? Next, it boosts creativity. When you have a clear niche, you focus all your creativity and on developing new and innovative ideas within that niche. All you're doing is ex expanding your mind with other photographers and you're doing this beautiful imitation. You're doing this intelligent imitation where you're seeing other people in other markets that are doing your niche at the highest level and you're borrowing ideas and then you're looking at this person who's doing this at the highest level. And then you're looking at other niches of photography, but people who are successful in that other niche and you're applying the success the marketing, the website vibes, like you're taking different bits of different people's thing in order to boost your creativity. This leads to artistic fulfillment and helps you produce work that will absolutely stand out. So clear, having a niche is important. There's your, those are your five reasons. Helps you establish yourself as an expert, stands out from the competition, increases your profitability, helps you stay focused and creative. Photographers are the most like, oh, like, oh, that's pretty. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's over. Oh, oh, wow. It's like focus, man. And you wonder why you don't make any money because you're all over the place. For, for a thing that demands you focus, like you put a frame around your thing and we focus on it. That's, that's the act of a photograph, but we don't approach business like that. We don't, we don't approach business with the fact and the focus. Like here's the form. And when we point our camera at something, it is just a loose form. And in order for us to save it, in order for us to capture it, we have to frame it. And how we frame it is by putting a box 
around it. And now we're containing it and we're taking that form and we're turning that form into a thing. So now that we have a thing, if we know that that thing is a photog a photograph that's marketable to a certain niche, once, oh my God, now you have an audience. Now you have an audience for that thing that you do. Like that's what we do as photographers. We get to choose what we put a Welcome. frame around. Let's go, Eric. Thanks for hanging out. We get to decide what we put a frame around. If we're just framing anything, well, then there's no audience for that thing. And if there's no audience, like, where's the value? Where's the value? If there's no audience that sees the, like, value equals money. It's so simple. People exchange value for money. So you see, a, you see an idea, you have a thought. If it's not a specific thought on a specific niche for a specific goal, you are just pissing into the wind and you are wasting your time for, for, with your photography. Figure out what your niche is. What your niche is, is that thing that you would shoot if money was no object, but there's also a marketplace for it. You can't be like, oh my God, I really love shooting this one thing like hummingbirds. But it's like, unless you get so good that you're shooting hummingbirds at a National Geographic level, unless you're getting so good that you can sell your hummingbird photographs as stock, unless you're so good at it, you're gonna get hired to go out on expeditions with magazines and education and, and, and like educational facilities like universities to like capture and like get grants and like study hummingbirds. It's not commercial, it's more education. So I always would say, shoot headshots. <laughs> like people need, have, people have heads, they need headshots. So you have to form your niche from a need. You have to form the need. The need meaning, hey, I see that there's not a lot of people shooting food in this area. I notice there's not a lot of people doing great portraits in this area. That's you seeing the need. And now you're able to shape that form into a niche. That niche becomes a thing. And that thing has an audience. And that audience needs value that you can bring. And then that equals money. Doing it any other way doesn't work. Doesn't work. But again, you can try, but it doesn't work. Let me know. Give me a hey, yeah, if this is bringing you some value. Give me a hey, yeah. So how to read the market, how to read the market. Cause that's, if you don't know, if you don't know how to do the things that I'm just explaining to you right now, well, Jesus. So let's start by yes or yes. Identifying your strengths and weaknesses. Let me write down how to read the market. Oops. It's harder to write with this tablet than you think. I can do it better with my iPad. How to read the market. That's one thing that if I knew more about, I, I know I'm like an expert at reading the market now, but throughout my career, I've, you know, I knew enough to get this far, but I, now I know enough to like, you know, and that's what I'm trying to teach. I'm really trying to teach everybody who chooses to watch me how to read the market. Cause first, first, it's all about you. Let's figure out how you determine what niche you should be doing. What are your strengths? What like, Hey, I'm good at X my strengths. So ask yourself this in your notebook right now, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Then 
ask yourself, um, what would you shoot? And I'm going to add you shoot. I'm going to add one very important word. What would you shoot commercially? If money was no object object. What would you shoot commercially if money was not a factor? Meaning, I know that there is a market for cars. If I didn't have to stress about whether I would make a living, if I knew for sure I would make a living at what niche would you pick? What niche would you shoot commercially if money was not a factor? Here's another question to ask yourself. What? Oh my God, this pen. What niche would you shoot if you knew you would be successful? If you... If you knew 100%, you couldn't fail. That's another question as I want you to ask yourself, what niche would you shoot if you knew 100% you couldn't fail? Now, when you start asking yourself that, and when you start asking yourself about your strengths, weaknesses, and also your interests, the next thing that you have to ask yourself is every single time you're about to shoot something, super simple. Who would hire me to shoot this. You ask yourself this every single time you come up with an idea. And again, if you are, if you are taking pictures, meaning you take pictures, oh, that's pretty click. This is above you. This is ahead of your head. You need to be making pictures, meaning I have an idea and I'm doing an execution. This is for people who have graduated to making pictures because everybody with an iPhone takes pictures. Everybody who's ever taken a picture of a sunset thinks that they're ready for National Geographic. So if you're taking pictures, you're competing with iPhones. Literally, if you're making pictures, you're competing with other pros, which is the realm that you need to learn how to play in. Literally, it's it's literally the difference between like junior varsity and the major leagues. However, you want to it's like elementary school versus the pros. That's the difference between taking pictures and making pictures, because let me tell you a secret. Everybody who makes pictures can take pictures with their eyes closed. People who take pictures, not everybody who takes pictures can make pictures. So the fact that you're watching this podcast right now about how to find your perfect niche, we're hoping that you're right here. Because if you're not right here, the only way to make a living taking is doing events. And there's zero respect for event photographers. And event photographers do not get the kind of rates that I do. Event photographers do not get $10,000 a day. They just don't. So, um, but again, shoot other people's parties if that's what you want to hang your whole career on. Something else happening. Meaning if anyone else is there with a the camera, they get the same shots as you. <laughs> All they need is the same equipment, stand next to you. They're getting the same fire blower or juggler or whatever the stupid shit you're shooting. Come on, make pictures. Don't take pictures. Everybody takes pictures. So 
what do you shoot? And you ask yourself, who wants that work? Who would hire me to do this? Who? Once you start to ask yourself who, every time you do a session, you start to eliminate photos that you can't answer this question. If you can't answer the question of who, then that means there is no niche for that photo. There's no niche for that idea. And if there's no niche, then ask yourself, why the F are you wasting your time? Then ask yourself, if you realize that every six months is 1% of 50 years, why are you wasting your time not making photographs that don't move the needle, that don't fill a niche that you're trying to be in so you can make money from your photography? Every day that you spend doing street photography, that like is just, it helps social anxiety and it helps practice, but, but who hires you to do that? Who, 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 you hear me? Like Hootie the Owl, who is hiring you to do street photography? Who, who, who? Ask yourself, who? And again, that's not making pictures, it's taking pictures. And I love street photography. It's such a great exercise. It, it makes you like sharp and all this stuff in so many different ways, but that is not a commercial exercise. That's like, for me, a mental exercise. It has nothing to do with my photography career. And in fact, I don't even show the photos that I take. I don't even show them. I just do them for my own social anxiety. I show them on my newsletter. They have no commercial application. So if you want to be a street photographer, Okay, you better get you better get good at doing exhibitions, selling books and making selling prints. Better get good at that. You better get good at adding a product and you better look at Scott Schumann, who is the sartorialist because Scott Schumann figured out a way to turn street photography into a million dollar business. One person. Let's talk about Jamil Shabazz. Jamil Shabazz, my very good friend. You can watch my um, hour documentary that I did on Jamil Shabazz. Um, Jamil, for 30 years, didn't make a nickel shooting photos. Not like he made no money. He didn't have to. He was, on he was on pension. He was a correctional officer and he worked at night. So during the day, he would just take pictures. He didn't have to make money. He did that for 30 years until we met. And I'm like, Jamil, people should be paying you $10,000 a day to shoot commercially because they're actually starting to steal your essence. So then I helped him move into doing commercial work and now he does that as well as his fine art work now he does both he didn't know who he just did it for the love but then he got a publishing deal so then he started making books <sighs> who needs the work is what you got to ask yourself so here's an experiment Here's an experiment. This is what you do. Oh my God, it's 1995. This is what you do. This is how you find your niche if you're lost. This is how you do it. And again, it's like, I hope you guys are, I hope this is bringing you value. This is how you do it. You go to Behance if you're lost and you're really trying to find your niche. Start searching. Just start searching and click all the stuff that makes your heart go pitter patter. Whatever that stuff is that makes your heart go pitter patter. And then when you click it, you see up here, it says save. You can save it and then create a new mood board called a new mood board. Um, hello, oh, I guess I can only have, I can only have four. No, give me a new one. Give me a new one. Call your new mood board, um, dream portfolio. How about this? If you're lost, my dream dash portfolio. This is how you're going to do it. So it's going to be my dream car portfolio. It's going to be my dream portrait portfolio. 
um, it's going to be my dream um, beauty portfolio. It's going to be my dream architecture portfolio. That's what you're going to do. Start searching niches and start finding and saving. Use this save, create a new mood board and call it my dream X portfolio. Get yourself nice and blown away in Behance because the work is so next level. But again, don't just find things because you think that they're pretty. Oh, this is my dream flower portfolio. No, no, because we're trying to do commercial work. So your dream car portfolio, your dream interiors portfolio, your dream architecture portfolio, your dream headshot, portrait, editorial, <clears throat> commercial, like product, still life, like this is all commercial applied photography. So I want you to use Behance if you're lost to use mood boards to build your ideal portfolio. Only save images that make your heart go pitter patter. Now, once you've done that and spent an afternoon doing that and start looking at those mood boards, now, guess what? You got to make the kind of work. You got to choose one. You got to choose one. And the one that seems like the shortest route, the one that seems like the path of least resistance, pick that one and start one by one trying to break down how that photographer is getting that light, that mood, that feeling. And again, it goes back to intelligent imitation. That's how you create a dream portfolio using, using mood boards. It's, it's what you do. Sorry. So you got to know like whatever niche you choose, the, the amount of learning and growth that has to happen within any one of those niches is insane. Like, you, you don't get to just rest. There's no rest when it comes to professional photography. Like literally, you have to read the market. You have to be looking continually at what's happening. And it's like, oh, okay, does that mean that metal is, oh, well, maybe metal's not. Oh, but look at this. This is like, is this, how are they doing that? Like this looks almost like some sort of crazy, post-production like what's this vibe that they got going through here what is that how is he doing that what's this in the background is this a new trend let me see the picture about back okay what's this is this a trend like this is how you read the market is like you look at work that goes beyond what you're doing to see like oh my god am i pushing my stuff hard enough because it looks like this one guy is using some sort of digital to make it so he's liquefying the like how's he doing like is my shit this cool like this this is what you do this is how this is how this is how you do it <sighs> what is the competition shooting what is the competition shooting? Who are they shooting for? What could you do to make the shots that you're seeing as like your ultimate X portfolio? What could you be doing to make them better? Like, what could you do to give this photograph, this session soul, more soul? Intelligent imitation. Know that, know that finding your niche isn't just about your personal interests and your strengths and weaknesses. It goes way beyond that. It really does. You actually also have to identify areas where there's a demand for services that you could provide. Too many people don't do this. And I, I, I just started doing this in the last five years, which is walk your neighborhood, walk your neighborhood. I hope you're making notes. 
Find vibrant businesses. Then look at their website. Look at their social media. Does their website and their social media meet your standards? Could it be better? Is it tacky? Is it laid out bad? Is the photography good, bad, ugly? What's their social look like? How consistent are they? How often are they posting? When was the last time they posted? Are they using video? How good is their copy? What's their messaging like? This is how you read the market. You can do this with every business. Find a vibrant business, then look at their offering. Look at their website, look at their socials. Use Google Maps, you check an area. You can just drive to another area, use Google Maps. Check businesses and websites. See what they're doing and write down the business name, what they're doing wrong and what you could do to bring them value. And then you could send emails out to all of these people. And this is how instantly now you have clients where you didn't have clients before. That's how you read the market. It's just one way of how you read the market. Imagine, you see, I was just looking at Behance and showing you how to read trends. So that's also part of it is going to Behance and trying to understand what the latest trends are in photography, where there's gaps and how you could take a trend from a different niche of photography and apply that trend to your niche of photography. Intelligent imitation. So if there's an example, like if there's a new trend in fashion or food, think about how you could put your own spin on it and add it to your own photography. Study the work of successful, successful photographers in different niches by analyzing the work of photographers that are truly working, that are balling out of control. You can identify areas where you could take something from what they're doing and apply it in your niche to that shortage of that type of work. Think about how you would apply your own skills to your own niche by taking ideas from successful photographers in other niches. I just said that twice in two different ways. Ask questions. So when you get potential clients, and again, I'm going to get deep on my masterclass about how to make this happen. But when you talk to potential clients, you have to analyze the needs and, the pref and their preferences. When you understand their needs and preferences, you can understand where there's gaps in the market. Like you have to ask the right questions. When you ask the right questions, like what was the, what was the worst experience that you've had working in the industry? What's the worst experiences like you've had in marketing when you're trying to market your business? If you had a magic wand, what would be a perfect scenario for you and us to work, work together? Like if money was no object, what would you love for me to be able to do for you? Or what would you love a photographer to be able to do for you? You ask them these kinds of broad stroke questions where they can't really give you a wrong answer. You learn how, t how clients actually want to be served. You actually learn how clients want to be served. You know, tell them like, if money was no object, how would you market your business? And then you hear what they say and then you reply back and then you say this, well, you know what? If money was no object, this is what I'd do to help you market your business. And then you give them an idea that's 10 times better than theirs. And you start with if money was no object, meaning already they know that that execution is going to be expensive. So by asking and analyzing the needs and preferences of clients, you learn information that you get to basically just use back to, oh, really? What do you need? What do you find? What's the biggest problems? Oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God. Now you go over here and you create the exact thing that they need. And then you just be like, hey, you know what? Here, let me show you this thing that I just, this I thought of. And like, you now have a solution for the thing that they just told you was their problem. Give me a hey yeah if that's registering. Give me a hey yeah. Give me a good vibes if that's registering with you. By asking questions, you identify areas where there's gaps in the market. Seriously, you might find that clients are looking for a certain type, a certain style of portrait photography or a certain look and feel that kind of, maybe it's not exactly your style, but 
if you're realizing that like this client's looking for me to shoot you know 30 executives and they want it to be really clean shot on white so they can do close cropping and like have graphics behind and it's like it's not something that you shoot because you're like yes a yes. fashionista and all styly and like that's are you going to be saying no to that work are you going to do that work and add your kind of spin on it to take their idea to like a stratospheric level seriously learning how to read the market and learning how to ask the right questions it's literally your clients are doing the work for you and then you do this other thing that i've talked about in one of my videos then you say this thing which is oh yeah what's your budget and then they tell you how much money they want to spend so you can take all of it like it's jedi mind tricks the whole way along like tell me what you need I need this, 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 and this. And then you're like, okay, guess what I have? I have this, 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 and this. And then they're like, oh my God, I need that. And then you want, you don't know how much to charge for it. So then you say this, how much money do you want to spend on that? And they say, I'll spend $10,000. And then you're like, guess what? The thing that I have, it costs $10,000. And they're like, oh my God, I, I'm so happy. Like, I'm so happy that I met you. And you, you're, you cost the exact amount of money that I have that's it's what a coincidence it's brilliant <laughs> give me a vibe if this is registering with you <laughs> all right so reading the market reading the market if you live by the way in a rural area where there's a lack of photographers here's what you do is you dive into agricultural manufacturing and stock photography live in the smallest town nowheresville bum f iowa agricultural manufacturing construction stock photography learn how to fly a drone aerial surveying you'll make a hundred thousand dollars your first year read the market there's farmland everywhere who are richer than farmers seriously like some farmers like cajillionaires they don't need social media but you can use you could use that farm and that farmer to create stock images in order to sell to other people who are doing articles on farmers and farming let's go matt stone thanks for upgrading appreciate you my guy get a little two to smoke so <laughs> we use social media that's what we use social media for is to identify market gaps, content gaps. If you are on social media and you're just dap double, like you don't even realize that your tongue's hanging out and like you've been doing it for like an hour, like you're just death scrolling. All just people who you've decided somewhere back in the day to follow, that's what you're doing. Somewhere back in the day, you decided to follow all these people and they're just, you're just, okay. First thing I would do is unfollow everybody on your feed. Number one, that is not in the industry that has, does not have the ability to potentially be a client. And number two is like someone who's a friend that, you know, actually in person, I would unfollow everyone else. And I would start loading your account with other photographers that are creating work better than you in your niche, the niche that you're trying to be in. And I would start seeing what they're doing, seeing who, what clients they're following, who they're following, who they're working for, and start literally intelligent imitation. Literally, I'm not saying stock people, but you have to identify photographers who are working social media that are doing social media well. You see a photographer that has 100,000 followers on social media, follow them. Start learning what they're doing. What are they doing in order to get 100,000 followers? What are they, are they selling? What does their work look like? Like, what's their product? Net, chase, chase their links, click their link in bio. What does their website look like? Like, this is how you read the market and imitate a business that is existing already so your business can be successful. Stop trying to reinvent the wheel. It's like literally, Stop trying to reinvent the wheel. Just work on something that works already. 
social media, we use that to identify content gaps. Then once we curate our social media feed, so it's only other photographers that are better than us than its buyer, potential clients that we could be working for. And third, inspirational, motivational, business related content that's going to help you shift your mindset into the level of business person that you actually need to be. Those are the only accounts to follow. Everybody else, unfollow them. Those girls with the like half naked tattoo girls that are showing the only fans that can't like unfollow all of that stuff. It's low frequency. It's not, it's not raising your bar and it's making it. So everybody says, I hate social media. The reason that you hate social media is because you've curated your social media to be a digital swamp. What you need to do is curate your social media to be a digital garden, a garden of inspiration, a garden of motivation, and a garden of other people that you can intelligently imitate. That's what your social media should be. And when your social media is like that, when you open your social media, you're doing it for a purpose. You're doing it because you're researching, you're learning what other people do so you can do the same, so you can be successful the way that they are. If you're just death scrolling, what are you doing? Honestly, what are you doing? So know that um, I wanted to be a fashion photographer when I started. Fashion was what I shot. That's all I knew. That's all I cared about was fashion. But understand that how I broke through is by only shooting fashion. That's all I did. I only shot fashion for the first several. I got to hide this because I have some NSFW. If I do a scroll here, y'all going to see it. And then my uh, video is going to get flagged for... Um, it's just not going to monetize. So let's just do this. So I started as a fashion photographer. This is what I wanted to shoot more than anything. And I shot fashion wholeheartedly. But I realized that fashion for me are kind of disposable pictures, meaning the fashions as soon as you as soon as it runs the next season, this stuff is all out of fashion. The makeup goes into fashion so quickly, the pant cuts the styles like goes out of so for me, I found and I learned that there's more value and photographs have more staying power if you shoot portraits. So I dove into shooting portraits. And because of that, because I embrace shooting portraits so early, I've had the pleasure of shooting. Oh, and again, Pharrell Williams, this photograph is from the session 2001. One of the most important sessions I've done in my career, the most stolen reposted, like this is the session that I did that everybody knows Steve Cardi because I shot Pharrell. So this is a photo that has propelled my career and it's literally over 20 years old. Daft Punk, over 20 years old, but it shows you the power of portraits. Ciara. UN General Romeo Dallaire, Shake Hands with the Devil. That movie was made based on Hotel Rwanda. That was made that was made based on this man's life. This was General Romeo Dallaire. So this this is the life that you have when you don't compromise and you just do one thing over time. I just shoot people. So because I just shoot people, look at the people that I've had the pleasure to shoot because that's all I do. So <laughs> focus, focus. I did five years of fashion and then I moved to only portraits and I did only portraits and I'm now, I call myself an editorial shooter. I'm an editorial portrait photographer. Jamil Shabazz, like John Legend, uh, Grandmaster Flash, DMX, rest in peace. Tom York from Radiohead, Phil Collins, Roger Moore, rest in peace. Corey Haim, rest in peace. I'm telling you, now I shoot, you see what I shoot? Celebrities, rappers, streetwear, actors. All of those were content gaps when I started. When I started, there was nobody shooting rappers the way that I could created a niche there. 
There was nobody like doing editorial portraits when I started here in this market the way that I could. There was no one that was taking cele like celebrities and putting them in the streets, shooting celebrities in the street next to brick walls and graffiti. Nobody was doing that. I created a niche. I created a niche where I saw there was a gap in the market. And I did that 20 years ago. And I'm still riding on a niche that I kind of created. So you got to be open to new opportunities and be willing to adapt to evolve as the market changes. You have to be. At the time when cannabis became legal, I created a whole cannabis website and a whole other company that focused on helping you bring your cannabis visions to life because it's legal in Canada federally. So I like, I just, I, it's part of my culture. I just created a whole other business filling that gap because there was nobody doing cannabis photography at the level that I could. So I just created it as an offering and understand that this back when legalization first started in Canada was there, like I was doing cannabis related content jobs three days a week, three days a week. I was shooting flower. I was going to grow facilities because everybody was spending millions of dollars. Um, it's, it's the tobacco leaf. It's not banana. Um, people were spending millions of dollars on cannabis and I was right at the forefront at the highest level shooting legal cannabis. So I saw a gap in the market. So I created work to fill a market and then got client work for literally three years until the money dried up. So that's being able to read the market and see a gap in the market and then create content to fill a gap because you know that this is, this stuff is needed and it's, it's again, federally legal in Canada. So I was able to create all of this work. I created new social media accounts based on this work because I didn't want to attach this work to my main work because it's confusing. So I created a whole other persona called the Cannabis Photo Pro. And yeah, I do pro photos of cannabis. So again, this kind of fell off. Like there's really no money in cannabis up here anymore. So I don't really do that much anymore. But as that gap closed, I opened, I focused on other things. You know what I mean? We have to be adaptable. Content gaps are everywhere. So you might be facing some challenges. Um, the biggest challenges that you're going to find is self-doubt, self-doubt. And, and you, once you notice competition, once you actually see how good other photographers are and you realize you're down here, it just means you need to do the work. And the work is the first phase of the Cardi method is the work. You can't advance to level two until you master level one. So I talk a lot about level two and three and four and five stuff because it's necessary to get to that place. But if you're never really able to get out of that, like mastering the work, shifting from taking pictures to making pictures, <sighs> it's hard. And the self doubt comes from when just because you have the ability to operate your camera, just because you know, camera controls, it doesn't make you a photographer. That just means that you're an operator, but you need the technique to learn how to turn understanding how to use camera controls into uh, that's my full time job. So um, there's some strategies to get over the challenges that you face. First strategy, join my discord. I created a photography community of photographers just like you um, have almost 900 photographers in my community that are sharing stories and battling through it together. And you got to know that like, it takes perseverance and patience when it comes to um, mastering your niche and mastering photography in general, it takes time and effort, you have to think about a farmer, 
how much work does a farmer have to do before they see a single reward? The farmer has to prepare the land. It's got to hoe the land, water the land. Then it's got to like till the soil, plant the seeds, water the seeds, wait for sun, the right conditions. So guess what happens? Nothing. Guess how long? Guess what happens the next day? Nothing. Next day, nothing. Guess next. But guess what? Still have to water the seeds. Still have to till the land. Still have to do all the same work as if something's happening, but nothing's happening yet. Guess what happens if he stops watering, stops tilling the ground? Nothing grows. So we have to stand on ideas not yet built. Just like the farmer has to stand on the fact that he's planted a crop and there's no sprouts coming through yet, but you know that it's going to happen. We got to do the work, even if we don't see the result yet, because anything worth doing, the results does not going to come like that. It doesn't like, oh, I want to be a pro photographer. Oh, now I'm making a hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh, wow. Really? Really? It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. And, and in fact, if you're not insane about learning new information gifted member let's go mike thanks for the gifted my guy appreciate you it's really nice of you appreciate you <laughs> never necessary but always appreciated smoke machine she back appreciate you mike thank you man so know that you have to have perseverance and patience you got to have dedication determination all those buzzwords and it takes time and effort it doesn't happen it doesn't happen like that it's so it so doesn't happen like that so how do you become sure about your niche this is the last stuff that i'm going to talk about this is how you become sure about your niche and i got to go through this fast because i'm behind number one i'm going to write down the publications the campaigns the editorials that impact you the most tear them out like you you need visual material so create folders go to the dollar store buy some manila folders and magazines that you buy start tearing them out or create mood boards if you want to do it digitally but you need to you need to like hold on to and like take stock <clears throat> of the publications campaigns and editorials that impact you the most next you need to write down the photographers directors art directors and the designers that their style you love the most. Next, you need to immerse yourself in their work to condition yourself to think at that level. You need to write down their tone, their style, and what makes them great. Research their websites, their landing pages, their marketing material, their social media. Every single detail that you think that this photographer is making money Make note of every single way that you think that this photographer is making an income. Research everything. And if you do that with a wide range of creators, photographers, directors, fashion directors, fashion stylists, it's impossible to copy a single style. If you do an amazing cross-reference of all these different things that like I want to be all of this. It becomes impossible to copy a single style. What you're creating is an incredible, unique offering filtered through the vision of you. What that's going to do is burst a flow of new ideas, but also new problems. Every story has an ideal outcome. So you need to write your story and imagine what your ideal outcome could be if your story, if your life was like a novel. I want you to include the highs and the lows in all the problems that you had to systemize. And again, think of your ideal future as the end goal of the story. Think about how crazy your journey has been so far. And like, if this was a movie, what would be a great point to start your, your eight mile, your eight mile story? Think about that. And then write down the perfect outline of your perfect life. What chapters do you have to include in, these perf in this perfect life? Think of it like this. Point A is where you are now. Point B is where you need to be. 
And then the steps that you need to get there become the chapters of your life. Write your story. This is what makes you likable, by the way. Going through this process, this is what makes you likable and relatable. You need to start writing about this journey that you're on, this journey of professional photography. And by the way, it is a journey. And writing about your journey of trying to make a living as a professional photographer will give other photographers hope. If you write about your journey, you'll give other photographers hope. And if you learn to write about your photography and learn how to be persuasive, that's going to give your business life. So imagine this, you could write the sections of your life, your supposed beautiful future life as chapters or as an article or a newsletter. Then you could repurpose that writing into an audio podcast or a YouTube video. And then you could condense the main points into a thread, into a carousel post or into a LinkedIn post. Or you could rewrite those main points as tweets. And then you could turn those tweets into reels and posts for other platform. What that is, is it's a multi-dimensional look at you and your life and your problems. And that will change your absolute life in six months. Like honestly, if you take that multi-dimensional look at your life, write your story and then dissect that story and filter that out to people, that's a multi-dimensional look at your life and it's you being transparent about your problems. That will change your life in less than six months. And by the way, that's kind of what I do as you're seeing here with this whole YouTube system and my newsletter and everything. And it completely changed my life, completely changed my life. Everything that I learn the next week, I teach it here. Everything that I learn the next week that I teach it because I want, I'm continually absorbing information because I'm in a new phase of my life. I'm in a new phase of my life. And that phase is I'm trying to bring new value member. to people. Let's go Steve's creative sessions. Thanks for becoming a member. I'm trying to bring value to people. So everything that you learn the next week, you could literally be teaching. All you need to do is give your honest opinion, by the way. Imagine you buy a new lens. You don't have to be a teacher to be able to give your honest opinion on that lens, what you think about it. You have an honest opinion. And if you have an honest opinion, that honest opinion is credible and has value. For somebody so you don't have to be me you don't have to be 33 years into a career in order to teach something or to bring people value don't wait for experience in order to start bringing value to people you can bring value to people today and in fact you don't have a business until you start bringing value to people so um There's two steps to happiness, two steps. Number one, zoom in on what's important with your photography career, with your life, with your loved ones, two steps to happiness. One, zoom in on what's important. And step two, zoom out on everything else. That's it. Nothing else is important. Once you zoom in on what's important, you realize nothing else is important. So forget about all that other shit. The solution to your struggle is perspective. So immerse yourself in information. Honestly, that's the only way out is if you immerse yourself in information. When you're not listening to information, you're like, once you immerse yourself in, into information, when you're just constantly learning, when you stop, like when you turn the information off, your, your brain just gets flooded. That just gets flooded with all the ideas that you now have from all of the bridging of the gaps that happen from that new information. It's so it's so natural once you just flood your mind you with what people who are successful are doing. Welcome, James. Thanks for joining us. So once you flood your mind with all of the successful people, what they're doing, 
the amount of connections that you start to bridge from that information, it's insane. Trust me. So, um, I hope today brought you some clarity on finding your niche. I, I get asked a lot and I have a lot of you. I read your chats. <laughs> I see that at times you're struggling to find your niche, but you have to understand like you have to have the confidence in yourself. And if you do it the way that I suggested in this episode, intelligent imitation and all the other, I mean, again, I've done done versions of this episode a couple of different times because it's a topic that continually comes back over and over and over again. But today I wanted to do this one a little bit different. And because I do a lot of research for my master class and my master class is, wow, I, I actually have to go because I'm prepping for that right now. But um, if you're in my master class today, you better have, you better have your brain ready. I would actually suggest, um, I would suggest uh, drinking a coffee because you're going to need to be sharp as a tack. Guys, I hope today brought you value. I hope today brought you value. That's my only goal with this channel. I'm trying to help 25,000 photographers make a living with their camera and their creativity. The new photographer isn't a photographer at all. We're content creators. We're idea generators. We are storytellers. There's so much power that we have as long as we realize that it's not about us. It's about what our God-given talent was put us here to do. Yes, sir, if yes. you realize that our God-given talent was put here to bring value to people with our talent visually, that talent visually is a million dollar a year business. But you just have to learn how to frame what it is that you can do for people and stop making it about you and start making it about the value that you can bring to the industry. If you think of it that way, you can't fail. Thanks guys for watching. I love you so much. You're very welcome, James. I appreciate you being here. Everybody, you might have noticed you just got an entire hour and 15 minutes of commercial free content. That commercial free content is because of the members of this channel. I have 250 members that support this channel and make it so I don't actually have to have commercials. I don't have to have commercials when I do my live stream. So nothing important is interrupted. I feel like when I'm on these flows, I don't want to have to interrupt it with commercials just to make the small amount of money that I make from ad dollars. What I would rather do is bring you value. Because of that, everybody who became a member in the last little while, you're going to see your name scroll across the top of the screen. If you became a member within the last 25 and also my subscribers, you guys start as subscribers. Eventually you become believers and become members. So if you subscribed in the last 25, you'll see your name across the bottom. Thank you guys so much. You'll notice no commercial spots, no fluff, pure information. If this brought you value, please subscribe, join the Discord, and don't forget you got this. The hardest part is showing up and doing the work. So do that, show up, do the work, be consistent, and you'll succeed.